you know, something's been sterilized that, again, we don't have the capabilities to do. Well, that, and, uh, that's, so, yeah, I mean, I think that something like that is, you know, very possible. Well, that's what's scary. You know, Jason, my Saturday host, uh, Michael W. Hall, I'm, I'm not going to go into it because we talked in depth about it the other night on my show. And, you know, what happened with them, he runs a group called the UFO I team. They go out and try to get, you know, film and, and, and anything they can to prove that UFOs <clears throat> exist. Now, he was a superior court judge and he's a practicing lawyer in the state of Washington. So the guy is very intelligent and the people in his group, I think there's like about 13 of them. I mean, there's some of them are engineers down at Boeing's, you know, there's a hypnotist there. You know, uh, it, it really intelligent people. Well, they went up to Mount Adams, which is a hot spot for UFOs in the state of Washington. They went there, I think, the 27th, 28th, and I think maybe the 29th of August. Now, what happened was that, you know, towards the night, they were getting some good footage of unidentified objects, okay, UFOs. And, you know, it was getting late. It's also up there, it gets really cold. You know, I'm, we're talking about near freezing. And, you know, he had a, uh, well, a place to sleep uh, with a friend of his, had a camper trailer. And, you know, he went to go to bed. He uses one of these sleep uh, path machines to help him breathe, you know, when he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, it, well, about like one or two o'clock in the morning now, I could be wrong if you're listening, Michael. Uh, the alarm went off and the machine stopped. Okay, well, his friend says, don't worry, Michael, I got a spare battery, a 12-volt battery. I'll just swap batteries and, you can, you know, you go back to bed. So Michael decided he was going to go uh, go outside and go potty. And they had a little porta potty set up uh, right next to the trailer. So he went out there, right? And he swears he only went out there to go pee and then he came back. Well, you know, in the morning, his friend goes, well, you were gone for an hour and a half. And then when they looked on the machine, there was an hour and a half dead spot, unaccountable. And another thing, it was really strange. His watch has phosphorus uh, coating, you know, on the numbers. So it's a type of uh, watch, you, you, you know, you outside in the bright daylight and you come in for maybe 20, 30 minutes, it's going to glow, you know, if you could see what time it is. And then it fades off. He said that thing was glowing like you wouldn't believe. Now, what happened before they actually went to bed? They saw a object come towards them, come to a stop, and it kind of pulsated the, the light on it. And then some of the people said they saw a like a blue laser light come out of the side of it. And, you know, they, they, they thought that was kind of strange, but then, you know, they went to bed. Well, what, another one of the guys there, because he was sleeping in the tent with his son, it was too cold for him, he decides to go in and sleep in his car. Well, you know, besides, you know, he would start it up and run the heater, you know, uh, then all of a sudden it wouldn't start. Well, the, I believe that was probably because it was cold, you know, not charging the battery enough, you know, between starting it. But here's the funny thing is the next morning somebody went by it and they had a compass and it went crazy. So then they got their all their compasses out and they were checking this car and, and the compasses were going crazy on this car now all of a sudden. So they backed the car out and they checked where the car was parked. No problem. You know, they didn't have that. They checked the car again in a different location. It was doing it. The guy took the car to the dealership. Now the car is a bar magnet with North and South Pole. And the dealership went out and started checking all their cars in the lot, you know, new and used. They None of them were magnetized. Now here's the funny thing is, the next morning, Michael... Remember, I said he lost an hour and a half time just to go pee outside when it's like freezing and comes back in as far as he knew and went right back to bed. He's gone for an hour and a half, totally unaccountable. Next morning, he has a triangle on his left uh, uh, wrist of marks, which was kind of strange. And, you know, uh, and... He didn't really think too much of it till we had him on my show and we were talking. I said, hey, do you have a compass on your house? And he went and got his compass, checked his right wrist. It didn't do anything. He checked his left wrist. The compass went crazy. Left wrist now. 
Now I asked, okay, Michael, you wear steel uh, toe boots from what I was told. And he goes, yeah, get your boots. The right boot wasn't magnetized. The left boot was magnetized. So I'm saying, I do think there's things out there. I got a funny feeling he went on a little hour and a half uh, ride somewhere. Well, that, that, that particular book I was, I was referencing actually does have a map of, uh, it's like, a, it's like a concentration of like, uh, abductions and things over, um, I think, like I said, since like the sixties or something, it was talking about, uh, again, when they started really heavily documenting these abductions and, um, they had a lot of, uh, you know, like the areas, like heavy concentrations. I mean, like you said, Washington was a big one. Um, and a lot of the, uh, desert towns, places like New Mexico, and um, some of the upper parts of Arizona and things had a lot of uh, a lot of abductions, and I think it's more because a lot of these places are possibly because they're isolated. Maybe um, if again, if they're going to be, you know, if you want to abduct something or somebody, you obviously don't want to land right in the middle of New York City or you know Los Angeles where you're going to draw a lot of attention. You want to try to stick to places where you could take somebody and they would be missed for, you know, a couple hours or a day or, you know, week. And, um, you know, this, and so in, you know, in studying this map, it's like, wow, a lot of these places are a lot, a lot of the areas are very rural areas, like, you know, towns of maybe three to 500 people or, you know, less than a thousand people, or they have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of farms, a lot of places where, again, you know, they could abduct somebody, you know, do, you know, who knows what to them and then return them back, you know, wipe their memories and, you know, and they would be, the, you know, nobody would be the wiser. If they're the so, lucky, uh, if they're the lucky ones that get returned, because I got some pictures on my computer that somebody used to be working for the government sent me some uh, cases where they were abducted and they found their bodies uh, and they were mutilated the same way that the cattle are. And again, they were found like in South America, in the Amazon, uh, in the rainforest, uh, in, in, in these people that were abducted, they had their heart like removed, their sex glands removed, uh, and certain things removed. Again, no footprints around them, no signs of any blood in the body or around the body. And, you know, the, the information I got that the, 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 the surgical uh, cuts for removing was done better than laser or laser uh, like technology. Well, they're not going to have laser technology in South America or in the rainforest. I don't think. Well, I mean, like, uh, you know, I mean, we, you know, I, I work for a hospital and we use robots, uh, to do a lot of the surgeries and things. And, you know, those are, you know, uh, you know, pinpoint accuracy. I mean, they can, they can do some amazing things, but, some of the things, again, that I've read in this book, um, you know, I actually looked up some of it online, is like, you know, the, the I guess the surgical techniques that are used, like you said, you know, the, the some of them have been drained of blood or like had certain parts removed, but they, it was done with such precision that, again, the person would probably, you know, if they did survive, you know, could still go on, you know, living a, you know, living a normal life with, you know, depending on what was taken, you know, from them. And, um, you know, which makes me wonder maybe if they're, you know, maybe there's some sort of a genetic, you know, um, you know, like a genetic farm or maybe they're harvesting, you know, uh, something for, to, you know, you know, good, bad or ugly. I mean, it could be something, they could be doing something, you know, to, save us from ourselves, maybe creating like uh, a whole other earth somewhere, or, or maybe like, uh, you know, the, the, was it Sweden, I think, or Norway, someplace they have that, uh, the vault with all the different uh, seeds from like every plant, you know, they could find every tree and every kind of plant, it's supposed to be like a doomsday vault. Yeah, there's a couple of those, um, including in Antarctica. I mean, they're, 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 there's a bunch of them scattered around the world. So, I mean, exactly. So what's to say that maybe there's some sort of alien race that's probably like, you know, look, these guys are going to blow themselves up. You know, we've already seen to the future or we, you know, or we've seen what's going to happen or we've seen what previous races have done, you know, and maybe they're creating a doomsday vault for us, you know, putting, you know, putting our genetic material, you know, somewhere and, you know, creating, you know, clones or whatever and, you know, basically saving us from ourselves, you know, I mean, 
there's like a lot of the, uh, you know, I've always been a big fan of ancient Egypt and, you know, in the history behind ancient Egypt and, you know, even the hieroglyphics and things they've had, you know, what looked to be like flying saucers in there or, uh, spacemen, you know, and uh, some of the, some of the things they built was far beyond, you know, the, the, the technology available at that time. So, I mean, you know, it almost makes you think, you know, what if they it came down and, you know, kind of gave us a hand and, you know, kind of helped boost our technology along and, you know, kind of got us where we are. You know, there's a lot of things that we, you know, modern marvels that we have. It's kind of like, you know, how, how was that done? You know, we probably couldn't do it to this day, but yet, you know, here they are, you know, <laughs> there's, you know, things that, that, that exist that we can't explain. So, you know, I kind of think maybe they may have possibly had a guiding hand at one point, but maybe now they're kind of like, you know, um, these guys have, you know, developed atomic weapons, you know, they're aggressive, you know, we may want to just kind of stand back and, you know, kind of see what happens with them. Oh yeah. That, I'm, you know, I was just thinking too, while you were saying that, just think of this though, too. It, don't they like certain exotic animals, don't they like go ahead and capture the animals and like, I hate to use this word people, but they, like the penis of certain a- animals are worth a lot of money the testicles and stuff because they think that it is, you know, it improves their sex life and all that stuff. So they, you know, they kill the poor animal for those, you know, certain glands and things. Maybe they might be coming down to us because maybe where they're at, maybe they could be dying off or whatever and they need fresh DNA or maybe they look at us as a delicacy, you know, like a penis on a stick. I mean, that's, that's, probably, a, that was a bad, uh, that's a bad probably, joke. Probably one way to look at it. I mean, <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I never kind of thought, really thought about it in that light because, I mean, that would be, you know, like, well, like you said, you know, like the shark fin soup. Um, you know, that was one of the things that, um, you know, was considered a delicacy, but of course, you know, it's also considered, you know, cruelty. Um, you know, the rhino horns, you know, with ivory uh, tusks on, on elephants. So, I mean, yeah, there could be something maybe, you know, they. You know, that maybe somebody somewhere is like, hey, I would love to have a human heart right now. Can you get one? We can have it shipped here fresh in, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of days, light years, whatever. Um, you couple know, so, minutes. I mean, as scary as it sounds, I mean, it's, that's, that's, it could be another avenue. I, I, I kind of want to put a positive spin on it, maybe hoping they're just kind of, you know, maybe putting our stuff somewhere, you know, to kind of save us from ourselves. But yeah, at the same time, it could be something more sinister at work there. Or like that movie in the Twilight Zone. I always remember, you know, the Serve Man one where, you know, this UFO landed and they had this big book. And they handed them to the to the government, the scientists. And, you know, they had the people convinced they were here to serve man, you know, and and everybody was so happy that these aliens wanted to help us. And then all of a sudden, airports, instead of having, you know, planes in the airports, right, they had UFOs and they were giving people, you know, trips to their planet for they could, you know, see their planet. And this one scientist at towards the end of the the show, right, he gets selected to go to that planet. And as he's walking into this UFO and these tall, you know, aliens, you know, with a big forehead, you know, the guy puts, uh, you know, is just ready to go in there and his ex-assistant comes running and she goes don't get on the book i mean uh the ufo don't get on don't go and he goes why we deciphered the book to serve man is a cookbook yeah i do remember that episode um and of course i was also made me think of the other uh another episode where the there was a an alien that landed and it was uh he had a a book that he was trying to give to it was, it was somewhere in mexico and, you know, they supposedly he killed a sheriff, but he resurrected him. And uh, apparently he had like like he had in these incredible healing powers and he was trying to give us a book on how to cure cancer and a lot of our, you know, a lot of the, the you know, diseases and things that we can't cure or have no cure for. This book had a cure for it. And he was trying to help, but they, you know, obviously saw him as being a murderer and, you know, didn't understand where he was coming from and shot him and shot him dead, you know, and, and they ended up burning the book that had all the cures and things in it. So, you know, you know, it's kind of, um, 
kind of my thoughts on it is maybe the aliens kind of want, maybe they do want to approach us. Maybe they just want to kind of understand where we're coming from, but maybe they, you know, like I said, 